It's the backbone of modern life. It's in the food we eat, the houses we live in, the cars we drive. Oil is one of the most important commodities in the world. But what would happen if all the oil in the world suddenly disappeared? Martial law has been declared to deal with the emergency. Food shipments are being delivered to New York. Hundreds of thousands are on the move. They say the cities are growing too dangerous. What would happen to our cities, our food, our way of life? What would happen to us? Today is that day. The day the world runs out of oil. Oil. For 150 years, we've been extracting it from the ground. An economical, versatile fuel that has made the modern world possible. In California, the Kern River oil field is a black underground pool containing more than half a billion barrels of oil. By itself, it could fuel America for four weeks. But in one minute, it's all going to disappear. The same is about to be true all over the world. From Saudi Arabia to the North Sea, to the massive tar sands of Alberta, Canada, the oil that drives our cars, flies our planes, and powers our factories, all of the oil that remains underground or trapped in the earth is about to vanish. From deep underground, an ominous signal. There's something going on. I gotta go. Yeah, come on. We've extracted more than a trillion barrels of oil from the Earth. About the same amount is supposed to be left. What's going on? I have, I have no idea what's going on. Yesterday, this single refinery processed 300,000 barrels of oil. But suddenly, there's nothing. The crisis many predicted for the future is now a reality. The results will be catastrophic. Our world will be reshaped. of accessible, untapped oil. But scientists are now confirming that it's all gone. Around the world, from Saudi Arabia to Alaska, the oil below the ground has disappeared. U.S. oil companies say as much as 20 million barrels are left at their refinery. Companies say it's not just our supply of gas, but diesel fuel, lubricants, asphalt, tar. All of the products that are made from oil will be severely affected if we can't find more oil. Tankers are the key to moving oil. Right now, there are thousands on the move carrying millions of barrels of oil. Countries who are shipping it out, including Russia and Saudi Arabia, order the boats back home. It's a huge blow to the United States. The country imports more oil than any other in the world. Every day, the United States produces more than 8 million barrels of oil, but it consumes more than twice that. Suddenly, the country is 8 million barrels of oil short every day. There are reports of long lines at gas stations as people try to stock up. Expect two to three hour delays. 
It's the last chance, perhaps ever, for people to fill up their cars. During the 1973 oil embargo, a reduction in oil imports meant stations across America began to run out of gas. Over 100,000 gas stations across the United States are being pumped dry. The same is true at others around the world. The price for what remains has skyrocketed. Many countries do have oil in reserve. The United States alone has 725 million barrels of crude hidden away. To protect the precious oil that remains, the government takes dramatic steps. Planes, trains, boats, all of them run on fuel that comes from oil. All but the most vital transportation is shut down. Tracks are empty. Flights are grounded. If you were one of the four million people flying today, you'd have no way of getting to your destination. The same is true of hundreds of thousands of tons of goods. People and products are stranded. The economic fallout is swift. Uncertainty, like the panic that followed the terrorist attacks on 9-11, forced the U.S. government to halt stock trading. More than $2 trillion worth of oil stock are now worthless. There are more than 400,000 people working in the U.S. oil industry. Going up to Mexico. Sure. All right. Now, their jobs have vanished. All right, let's move. They try to get home any way they can. So much uncertainty about what will happen next, thousands of other manufacturing plants close immediately. Millions of people lose their jobs. For both business and personal needs, America used the equivalent of 10 super tankers filled with oil every single day. This steel plant alone burned through a thousand barrels of oil a day. But now there's no oil to fuel the furnaces, no raw materials to turn into steel. Without steel, there's no new construction, no cars, and it's not just steel. Oil is one of the most powerful, versatile fuels on the planet. Dead plants and animals, compressed and heated over hundreds of millions of years, produced a primal planetary nectar, one that can be made into everything from toothpaste to lipstick, polyester to plastics. Now, it's all gone. An enormous chain reaction is set in motion. What's your name? Need a bed in your stat. Let's get him on the The lack of oil will soon oh, cripple power. every okay, part of go. our lives. Our so hospitals, our food, our power. And the crisis is just beginning.
martial law has been declared. The National Guard is now patrolling downtown Washington and Los Angeles. EU leaders in Strasbourg are sending 100 million barrels of oil to England. Stock markets from Tokyo to New York remain closed. Unemployment is over 30%. It's just five days since the end of oil. Around the globe, we can't meet our most basic demands. Food terminals across North America have been closed since the end of oil. In California alone, 1,300 trucks a day used to leave the state, carrying fresh fruits and vegetables across the country. Trucks would deliver products to centralized food terminals where other trucks would take them to grocery stores. But now, without fuel for trucks, groceries simply aren't being delivered. Enormous cities like New York are hit hardest. It took an average of about one American football field of farmland to support the diet of one person for just one year. Before the crisis, a trip to the grocery store was a part of the regular routine for North Americans. Now, armed guards protect stores that have food. 30% of fresh fruits and vegetables didn't even make it to the grocer's shelves because of small imperfections. But now, everything is being sold. Almost a quarter of it came from other countries. But that was five days ago. Now, food is disappearing. Farms also have too many mouths to feed. Every day, an adult cow eats 45 kilograms of feed. A pig eats three and a half kilograms. Now, there's no more food arriving. These animals are facing starvation. Our fragile power system is being ripped apart. For making electricity, Coal is king. 40% of the electricity in the world comes from coal burning power plants. This plant in England burned coal that comes from as far away as the United States. And all of it arrives by train. Each car could carry enough coal to power a small town for a day. Today, without oil, the trains aren't running. Blackouts spread across North America. But of all the states, Florida is hit particularly hard. It relies more heavily than any other state on electricity generated directly from burning oil. Big city hospitals are equipped with emergency backup generators, but they run on diesel fuel. This Miami hospital is on its last tank of diesel. There's only enough fuel for the next eight hours. The dark nights hide a changing world. Law and order has broken down. Looters look for whatever has been left behind. People are desperate, but they're not always looking for food. Greece. Diesel. Yeah. Diesel engines will run on cooking oil, new and used. And diesel engines are 30% more efficient than gas. 
In an average car, it takes just seven liters to travel 100 kilometers. As long as there's enough cooking oil, this truck and any other diesel-powered vehicle can stay on the road. Okay, they're almost. Rationing of fuel for emergency food shipments will begin soon in the hardest hit areas. The White House is warning that the oil reserves are down to just 500 million barrels. Experts predict that the United States may run out by the end of the year. It's been 30 days since the world's oil disappeared. Governments around the globe are taking dramatic action. Essential services are protected. Emergency oil reserves are turned into diesel fuel for trains. Coal is being delivered to power plants again. Some basic electrical services are restored in countries around the world. But in North America, electricity is delivered through a system of isolated power grids. It can't be sent from grid to grid. In Florida, where much of the state's power comes directly from oil, blackouts are still widespread. Emergency fuel gets passenger trains rolling. But now they're carrying food into hungry downtowns. But moving food is dipping into the world's emergency reserves. In the United States, there's only enough oil to last for 11 months. Cars, which once defined the country, may never get back on the road in the numbers they once did. There are over 235 million cars that run on gasoline in America. Imagine pushing your car for nine kilometers. That's the power of one liter of gasoline. But the country needs cars. It's literally built to serve automobiles. Half of America lives in the suburbs. Most of what we consume is delivered to us. With the end of oil, that easy suburban life is disappearing. A country built for cars is desperate for alternatives. In the American Midwest, 400,000 farmers are planting a new crop. Once filled with fruit and vegetables, these fields are now growing soybeans. Oil can be extracted from the plant and turned into diesel fuel. There is another option. Corn can be made into ethanol, a fuel alternative for gas-powered cars. 600,000 square kilometers of land is now devoted to growing corn for fuel. And there's proof that ethanol works. In Brazil, there are still cars on the road, even without oil. Cars and trucks here can run on ethanol made from sugarcane. North America is decades behind. But there's hope that the end of oil might not be the end of the line. Thousands of electric cars can already be seen on the streets of the United States. On a planet without oil, they could very well be the future. But to get to that future, the world is going to suffer through a dark, dangerous winter. The White House 
Bezos has announced that the big three automakers have been taken over by Washington. They'll concentrate on making electric trucks to supplement food deliveries along with diesel. The Department of Agriculture has announced an aggressive plan to plant sugarcane throughout Florida, Louisiana, and Hawaii this winter to speed up ethanol production. Food shipments from area farms to New York, Philadelphia, and Boston have been further reduced to every other day. It's been five months since the end of oil. In big cities throughout America, food terminals have closed. Long lines form at train stations. Powdered milk and rice have taken the place of fresh produce. Hungry cities don't have enough to eat. Food shipments, coal deliveries, fire trucks, and other essential services, all are still getting fuel from emergency supplies. But almost everything else is at a standstill. To make the final barrels in reserve last as long as possible, the United States has further reduced its oil use. But if there are no workable large-scale alternatives, within months, there won't be any food deliveries at all. While food is being brought in, garbage isn't being taken away. Every year, it takes nearly 6,000 trucks burning 75 million liters of diesel to get rid of New York's garbage. In this new world, garbage cleanup is a luxury. Even with isolated cities, growing hunger, and a looming winter, North America is luckier than most. Ninety-six hundred kilometers away, economic disaster. Ninety percent of Saudi Arabia's income from exports used to come from oil. But now, the country's economy has collapsed. This is one of the last food shipments to Japan. The country used to import 60 percent of its nutritional needs. The population of one of the most prosperous countries in the world will begin to starve. With supplies of fuel so desperately low, people aren't waiting for governments to find answers. In garages and basements, people are finding ways to use their Ready cars. For next one? Okay, and I have... Combining methanol, lye, and other scavenged chemicals, people are becoming chemists. Ready. Homemade biofuel is being distilled. I think this one's ready. And it's dangerous, but if it works, it will give those with the right materials a way to travel, to leave the cities if they need to. But such do-it-yourself solutions only work for cars that run on diesel fuel. These methods won't be able to keep diesel-driven cars on the road for long. All of the easy fuel alternatives are facing serious hurdles. After a massive emergency planting, the soybean harvest in North America is twice as big as the year before. 
almost two billion liters of biodiesel have been produced. But that's still less than 1% of the diesel North Americans used each year before oil disappeared. And there won't be any more shipments until next harvest. Corn used for ethanol is also seasonal. In the last five months, more fuel from corn was produced than ever before. But governments around the world face a brutal choice. Should next year's crops be used for fuel or food? Hunger isn't the only problem. Hospitals are running out of critical supplies that were once made from oil. Every year, more than 15 billion rubber gloves are needed. Drugs, lubricants, plastic gowns, all are made from oil. Without them, drug-resistant infections are spreading more quickly. Even with crumbling health care, some people are still surviving in the cities. But now, there's another hazard. Every year in New York, there are major electrical transformer fires. But now when it happens, an inconvenience becomes a disaster. Abandoned cars make it difficult for emergency crews to respond. To make things worse, winter's coming. Put in all your winters. Throughout the Northern Hemisphere, people have to make a decision. Stay in the hungry, dangerous cities or get out. The exodus continues. Across America, people are fleeing the cities. It's being called an emergency government transport. By foot, by sled, however they can, they're getting out. As the temperature plummets, hundreds of thousands of people are leaving. New York, Chicago, Detroit. They're heading throughout Europe. The destinations are Spain, Greece, and southern France. All are being overwhelmed by desperate immigrants trying to escape numbing cold. In the cities that are left behind, millions of cars. Even the vehicles that were working on cooking oil are abandoned. In cold weather, the oil becomes thick and sludgy. The fuel lines and engines clog. No people, no fuel, no food. Northern cities become islands of concrete and glass cut off by the snow. Desperate to survive, some people retreat north to the country. They bring whatever they've been able to carry. Two cans of sliced carrots. Non-perishable food to get them through the cold weather. But they'll only be able to eat what they brought. Or what they can hunt and trap. An adult male will need about 210,000 calories to get through the winter. A long winter looms in the country and the cities.
It's a famine worse than the mid-1980s when a million died. Experts believe the death toll could reach 20 million. The government has announced the emergency oil reserves have fallen to less than 250 million barrels. Two of the four installations are... It's been a year without oil. Countries are becoming increasingly isolated. Ports on America's west coast used to move over 55,000 containers a day, close to 2 million tons of material. Now, they're silent. The same is true around the world. Ports are shut from Russia to Japan. International trade is virtually over. Gas-powered cars, echoes of a bygone era, sit undelivered. The world's military has lost its power. In the United States, the Department of Defense used to be the largest single consumer of fuel, spending nearly $180 billion a year. Now, many tanks and planes have been abandoned. They're simply too expensive to run. Emergency vehicles are increasingly being powered by ethanol, fuel made from plants. Their engines don't need to be rebuilt to handle the new fuel. Simple conversion systems will do the trick. Let's go! But while ethanol works for emergency vehicles, it's not the solution for the rest of the world. Governments around the world have largely abandoned ethanol. The United States turned a record 40% of its corn crop into the food-based fuel. But that hardly put a dent in demand, and it meant corn was taken from a hungry country. Ethanol won't get all American cars back on the road. But fewer cars have been a blessing for some. Every year, hundreds of millions of animals were killed on the highways of the old world. Moose, deer, frogs. For many species, this year is the beginning of a population boom. But farm animals aren't so lucky. When oil ran out, factory farms stopped getting deliveries of feed. Now, they've been abandoned. Hundreds of millions of cows, pigs, and chickens have died. In the country, the future looks increasingly like the past. Show me what you got. The collapse of the factory farms has meant that the diet of many countries is changing dramatically. We eat what we grow. Hello, hi. Around the world, food production has become increasingly local. Urban farms are taking root. In suburbs, families plant whatever they can. A Category 5 hurricane has devastated Miami. Thousands are feared dead. When Katrina smashed into New Orleans in 2005, the cleanup continued for years. But in Miami, there's no fuel to rebuild. It's not the only challenge facing the big cities. The influenza outbreak continues to rip through America. Los Angeles, Miami, Houston, all are still struggling. Quarantine zones are being created. The Center for Disease Control say the death toll may be as high as 200,000. I think it's a 
hospitals are more difficult to reach and more urgently needed than ever. Come on, Ian. People who have saved gasoline for just such an emergency get a shock. Hoarding precious stores of gasoline doesn't work. The chemicals that kept it fresh have degraded the gasoline. After a year, the fuel has gone bad. What's going on? We gotta run. A world that was once so closely connected is falling apart. The price of lithium, needed for thousands of electric batteries, has soared again, as much as 300%. The abdication of the Saudi royal family is a shock. Immigration unrest in Spain and Portugal. New York has declared a state of emergency to deal with a chronic food. It's a migration that's never been. It's been 10 years since the world's supply of oil disappeared. Now, even out in space, things are changing. The oil that once helped send rockets into orbit is too precious to waste. Almost 200 satellites were once the backbone of our international communication systems. Now they're not being replaced. But in the world without oil, discarded electronics are now a resource. Hey, Dad, look what I found. Hey, look, look, cell phone. What was once thrown away has tremendous value. A ton of used cell phones contains over 275 grams of gold, almost 135 kilograms of copper, and over two and a half kilograms of silver vital materials in a world where trade has stopped. Hey, Dad, I think there's some gold in that. Oh, yeah. It's not just electronics. Plastic takes hundreds of years to disappear. Bottles and containers that were once discarded are now being recovered and reused. People are recycling like never before, on both a small and large scale. Ninety percent of a ship can be recycled, mostly for steel. It becomes a cheap raw material for building. Container vessels are being harvested. Not all ships are being torn apart. Now, hundreds of boats are running on biodiesel. This ship is carrying the first delivery of lithium to North America. The lithium comes from Bolivia, where it is being mined from the country's salt flats by the ton. Lithium is the main ingredient in the most efficient electric batteries, and the world is hungry for electric alternatives. Bolivia's industry is booming. On a planet without oil, Bolivia is a superpower, the Saudi Arabia of the new world. But for now, there isn't enough biofuel to completely restore world trade. However, another alternative is being aggressively pursued. Algae can be processed into oil, producing over 7,000 times more energy per square kilometer than other biofuels. And it's completely renewable, requiring very little fertilizer. Ten years after oil, 38 billion liters of biofuel made from algae are in use. But for now, there's not enough biofuel to get us back in the air.
commercial flying for cargo and for passengers is still far too expensive. 34 million passengers used to come through this airport every year. Other transportation is bringing much needed supplies to the world's hospitals. Some two million cargo trucks are back on the road. They bring hospitals supplies. They carry gloves, syringes and tubing, all of it made from natural gas. Hospitals are now cleaner, safer. It's an important step forward for the cities. Inside and out, the modern home has gone through a revolution. The human toll has been great. Communities are fractured. Families have lost loved ones. Experts warn that the levels of natural gas are dropping, and there are also warnings that we're rapidly consuming the global coal reserves. The coal That's better. Yeah. In a decade without oil, the world is still struggling to find a new balance. And the lack of oil will continue to change the face of the planet. Hostilities continue as China expands its lithium exploration across the Tibetan border. Estimates are that as much as 400,000 tons... Annual census shows that L.A. continues to be the country's largest city, with some 20 million people in Los Angeles. It's the first flight of a jet entirely powered by biodiesel. The company says it's planning six transatlantic flights a year. It's been 40 years since the world's supply of oil disappeared. The skies over this new world are noticeably cleaner. For 40 years, there have been no planes. Gasoline-powered vehicles are gone. Factories that once burned oil have long shut down. In Canada, the US, and Mexico alone, 3.1 billion metric tons of toxic pollutants have vanished every year. In North America, people have returned to some of the large northern cities. They've transformed the ruined roads and buildings. Abandoned apartments have been turned into greenhouses. An industrial powerhouse has become a farming society again. Now, parking lots and parks have been reclaimed and farmed. In New York, the city's Central Park is now a massive three and a quarter square kilometer farm. It helps support those who have returned to New York. This city eats what it grows. The days of mass food delivery to the suburbs are over. Stores abandoned and forgotten. Gasoline is completely gone. The oil reserves are empty. There are a few cars on the road, but they're much different than before. Cars used to weigh an average of 1,800 kilograms each, but the new vehicles are considerably lighter. And they're powered by electricity. Their bodies and engines aren't made from metal, but from lighter materials like carbon fiber. But these vehicles are expensive. The lithium to power their batteries is still in limited supply. To get large fleets of container ships and trucks moving again, the world has turned to biofuel. 
made from algae. In North America, huge bioreactors have been built. 39,000 square kilometers of algae are producing all of the fuel the country needs. Once it's processed, it's pumped through pipelines once used to move oil around the world. Increasingly, electricity is driving transportation. Electric trains are linking people around the planet. Cities are growing up all along the rail lines. Other cities are abandoned. Oil fueled an enormous boom around the world. In just 150 years, it allowed the world's population to double, then triple. It allowed food production to explode, world trade to expand. Without oil, the world has been profoundly reshaped. Our cities, our skies, our roads look nothing like they once did. Changing this one thing changed everything.